We begin by having Kent walk out and get used to the resistance. Now what, what happens with all the cords is that it's going to give you resistance pulling it backwards. So you reflex them, you've got to cause your muscles to kick in uh, from your proximal muscles to stabilize the core and, and stabilize the back. Now he has to control his muscles in order to walk backwards. Again, this is affecting his motor control. And the resistance pulling him back. Put him the hand. Okay. Swing his arm. Opposite arm. So okay. So now we've added reciprocal motion, and he's and he's and he, again he has to learn to control his gait pattern. Now we're going backwards, he has to integrate the muscles going backwards, and it looks easy, but it really is not because you have. The uh, cords that are uh, offering uh, resistance, causing him to have to control his muscles. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, nice and high. There you go. Nice and high. We we'll start promoting individual joints. Now we're trying to have him increase his hip flexion and knee flexion. We oftentimes have them use a exercise ball, and they'll hold the exercise ball. They'll tighten up their core. Right side first. Okay, ready? Okay, kick the ball. Let knee up to the ball. Knee up to the ball. Promoting motor control, and this will also affect the patterning, the gait patterns uh, that he's used to. We're trying to alternate, alter those gait patterns with him, which will then change the patterning in his in his, his brain uh, pathways as well. The important thing on, on doing uh, upper extremity exercise is that we have two points of, of, of resistance. And the, this is what really is different between any other type of exercises uh, where most are just a distal uh, resistance. This is a proximal and distal resistance here. The uh, important thing behind this is that this then causes a proximal joint stabilization by causing co-contractions or stabilizing the proximal joint. And then by using uh, Sheridan's irradiation theory, he's going to bring in all of the other components and muscles uh, in, in pattern. Right now he's doing a D2 PNF pattern. Go ahead, John. As, as we bring him through, the, uh, through this. And, and bring it down this way here. Uh, 
you see how slow and easy he, he's able to bring it down eccentrically. So this is a joint uh, stabil stabilizing portion here and then you have your distal component here and it's an eccentric uh, contraction that we used on your rotator cuff uh, shoulder depressors. So your humeral head depressors are being worked right here and they're being pulled down a little bit, ro your rotator cuff muscles, okay, which is your, you know, it, works, it really works for your infraspinatus teres minor. And then bringing in the supraspinatus component, eccentrically. All of the exercises that we have devised on the Vertimax uh, are functional exercises that will involve diagonal and spiral rotations of, of uh, the extremity. And this is after the concepts of uh, Cabot, uh, Voss, and Knott, and the PNF concepts of exercises.